A very good morning to all of you, and it's wonderful to be back in New York, playing for all of you this morning. A very special event for us, because normally when we go on stage, it's mostly as performers. Of course, performing is very much a part of what we do, but today uh, there's also a wonderful uh, release, the release of a wonderful book that Saskia has written. At the, we just finished this one uh, at Houston JLF, and now back here in New York, we would like to thank Teamwork Arts, JLF, Asia Society, Sanjoy and Rachel, thank you very much for having us here this morning. And um, we will be presenting a raga called Charu Keshi, and in the traditional way. Of course, a shorter format because it's a short concert. We are very happy that we are joined by this wonderful young tabla player, Nitin Mitta. Nitin and I go back many decades, but uh, now that he's based in the US, we perform a little less together. So wonderful to have him back on stage with us. So, without much ado, we'll be presenting Raag Charukeshi, following which the official release of the book Shastra, A Journey Through Indian Music History. Thank you.
inviting Saskia Raudahas to say a few words on her book, Sastra, A Journey Through Indian Music History. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Sanjoy. Thank you, the wonderful team of Teamwork Arts, um, Asia Society, every um, sponsor, supporter of this amazing festival. Shasta, a journey through Indian music. Perhaps the best through Indian music history. Perhaps a good introduction to that book is the small journey of my own history through Indian music history. I started out as a cellist sitting on a chair. My very first class with my Guruji, Indian classical music, I was seated on a chair and he was seated on the floor. Clearly, that is not the right equation for respectful apprenticeship. So I made immediate an effort to sit on the floor with, at that time, my regular, beautiful 18th century Since then, both I and the cello have evolved within the music itself. I worked with a wonderful violin builder in the Netherlands who built my very first cello as a nine-year-old. And I worked with him in his workshop. And we started experimenting with resonating strings, size of the instrument, and in his amazing generosity, he would always help out find amazing solutions. So finally, we came to what I now call the Indian cello. This is the smaller electro acoustic variant made by Alexandre Letelier, who lives in Pondicherry. So I worked with him and the original Indian cello was built by Eduard van Tongere and now performed by me, and I'm really happy to say a few of my students as well have started playing it. So that is my history in a nutshell, and the Indian cello. First, I fell in love with the music, and then the musician after that. The amazing Pandit Shubendra Rao, partner on stage, partner in life, and together we not only perform, but also run an NGO for music education in India and are really happy to share that within the, these last five years we've been able to reach and not only reach impact, I mean numbers are always numbers, isn't it? We need to know the faces behind it and how it impacts their life, but impacted the lives of over 50,000 children and 200 music teachers. Young, thank you. Thank you. From this effort, um, we created India's first music curriculum, Sangeet for All, for young learners. And as an extension of that, the last book in the series is Shastra. A Journey Through Indian Music History. I've written it indeed like a travel guide where you can make your little notes and I invite the reader or fellow traveler through this history to add on to their own stories of the music. In a largely oral history, it is never possible to put confined I should say, confine everything to a paper. It is oral, and so many things cannot be captured on a paper. The stories told, the generations that have followed this tradition. Often you'll hear an Indian classical musician on the stage say, I represent a music tradition of over 5,000 years. And 
I think most people think, well, oh, that's a bit much, isn't it? Actually, it isn't. Um, that doesn't mean that the music of 5,000 years ago sounded remotely similar to what it is today. But we can find concepts. We can find the music aesthetics of 2,000 years ago, Natya Shastra. We can find the system of the Guru Shishya Parampara on, in the Vedic traditions over 3,000 years ago. We can find origin of string instruments in the Indus Valley over 5,000 years ago. So yes, it is a 5,000 year old tradition that has evolved, taken in what it found of importance and an extremely, and perhaps me standing here in a sari playing Indian cello is an example of that, extremely inclusive tradition. Whoever wants to be a part of this music and puts in the time, sweat and tears that it demands to learn it to a certain level is welcome to do that. And that has been my amazing experience. The book touches upon literally the origin of music, Nada Brahma, followed by all these different treatises and the great concert musicians from Tansin up to the 20th century, but I also don't shy away from film music, fusion, or the modern traditions of tradition and technology. It's a history that I've tried to tell also not in the conflict-oriented time frames, but in the artistic time frames. Golden age of arts, um, from court to concert, or Darbar Sangeet. So please, um, it is available there. I'm also here. And I really could not think of a better location than the Jaipur Literature Festival, New York, to release Shastra. Thank you. Well, we at the Asia Society are equally blessed to be able to help launch this book with JLF and with our dear son, Joy Roy. So um, are we ready? Yes. Drum roll. <laughs> OK, maybe not. Uh, please.